Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy as Promo. Today we're gonna to take a look at 10 ways to take a screenshot on your Samsung Galaxy device here in 2023. Now the thing that's fun about this video is that I used to do it in the past with almost every single phone launch, especially from the Galaxy S8 and after, because that was when we lost those physical buttons. The Galaxy S7 devices were those last ones that we had with those buttons. People knew how to take screenshots. Then when we went to the full screen, basically a lot of gestures and swiping and such. So I wanted to take a look at this because I haven't done this for about three years, and there's actually more ways to take screenshots today than there ever was before. Now I'll be covering 10 of these. There is a couple more I could add in. I am not gonna be talking about the Google Assistant because there's actually a lot of setups and menus to go through to get it done. And it's also the slowest one out of every way to take a screenshot. And I won't cover an application that is a paid app, which is the Control Center application that I talked about a week ago. I wanted to talk about everything that is made by Samsung, stuff that is default, everything built onto the phone or baked and made by Samsung. So the first one that I do wanna cover is a way that you're able to do it with the S Pen. So if you don't have an S Pen, you can actually skip ahead a little bit if you would like. I have timestamps below the video, but if you have a Note device or any other Samsung phone with the S Pen, all you got to do is hover the S Pen over the screen, hit on the S Pen button, and it actually gives you two different options. These are tools to do screenshot that makes things actually a little bit easier. Now, if you don't want to hit the S Pen button, and if you have your S Pen out, you just simply tap on that little air command icon, and then this is where again it pops up. So I guess we'll first take a look at Smart Select since that's the first one. Smart Select allows you to select a particular area of the screen to take a picture of, and it's a way that you don't clutter your gallery. So when you take a normal screenshot, maybe some of the ways you do it is with the volume rocker or by palm swipe to capture, it's gonna save to your gallery automatically, and you're basically cluttering it up. When you do Smart Select, you're choosing a certain area of the screen, and you can just share it immediately rather than saving it to your phone. But if you do wanna save it to your phone, you have the option, it's right here, it's just this little save button, but you can share it immediately because maybe you just wanna share it with them and you don't need it in your gallery. And then once you share it, you just basically swipe back twice and you're out of it and you didn't clutter the gallery. Now the other way is a way that you can write on the screen if you wanna take a screenshot as well. So it's called screen write. Now, once it takes a snapshot of the screen, you can see on the very top, it didn't even pull in my toolbar. So it, it basically kind of minimizes all that stuff that you probably don't need, which is the time and your battery percentage, or if you have a good signal or not. But with this one, you're now able to write on that little screenshot immediately. So maybe you're, you took a screenshot of you know Google Maps and you're trying to tell people which way they should go. Uh, and then you're telling people maybe which way not to go uh, just because maybe this way is some construction. Or maybe you know there is a screenshot of Amazon and you want to make sure that they know exactly what you want for your birthday or for Christmas. Or maybe there's something said in an article and you want to highlight a couple of the words words or sentences. And again, through here, you can either save it to your phone uh, or you can just share it immediately because you know you don't need it on your phone. You're trying to share something with them. You can share it immediately. And then once it's shared, you basically hit on back and then this way you can discard it so it doesn't have to be saved into your phone. So yeah, that's two ways you can do it with the S Pen. Now, as I go through all of these ones, write down in the comment section below which of these is your favorite or what you are doing right now as default. As we go through these, I'll let you know which ones I do. There's about two of them that I do almost every single time just because it's very simple, easy, and fast. Now, the next way I wanna show you is one that you probably use personally yourself, and that's palm swipe to capture. But as you can tell, I had to lift up the phone to really kind of make it work. You know, I could have the phone on the table and try to swipe it, but normally it always moves around. Uh, maybe your hands are kind of dirty. Maybe you're just busy, whatever the case. You know, palm swipe to capture is an option that you can do. That was one of the first fun ways to do it at the very beginning of basically the S8 days. But you do have to turn on a setting and normally it is on out of the box. So if you happen to accidentally turn it off, all you have to do is just go inside of the advanced features and then inside of advanced features, it's called motions and gestures, and it's called palm swipe to capture. You just wanna turn this one on. Now, here's the cool thing about it. You know, I'm right-handed, so I usually go from the left to the right. Now, yes, you can go the opposite way. If you are left-handed, you can go from the right to the left and it will take a screenshot for you, but it does basically kind of re you know, require the whole palm. Some people may have super cold hands and it may not work. Some people may have smaller hands. Maybe they don't cover the whole area, surface area with their palm. So that one is one that is fun to use, but may not be the best for everybody. 
The next one that I want to cover is maybe another default by a lot of you, um, but you know it requires usually two hands to get it done. And even sometimes you accidentally hit the volume key, and then now you have like a little volume thing popping up on the screen, and then you take a screenshot, and then now you got this thing sitting in the middle of the way. So this one is, you know, another way you can take a screenshot. It's volume down and the side key. This is one of the oldest, most dinosaur ways of taking a screenshot on your phone. But again, it kind of requires both hands. It requires them to touch these things, uh, you know, and sometimes you mess it up and you get the volume in there. So that's not one that I use by default. Um, but I guess let me know if that's what you guys still use as well, too. But we're going to keep on going on because I'm going to show you some other ones that you may like a little bit better. Now, another way you can also take a screenshot is by swiping down and heading inside of your quick panel on the very top and you can take a screenshot. Now, you can move this little icon and make it into, you know, maybe your very first page or your second page. But here's the thing, though. My first page, there's so many things that I change on a daily basis or weekly or monthly that I have to have them here. Now, my top left is usually designated to something that I use all the time. So you can see here that my top left is going to be taking a screenshot. Now, if you don't see this as an option, all you have to do is just swipe down twice on the very top right hand side. And you see those three little dots and you go to edit these buttons. So you're going to edit these buttons. Basically, you press and hold and you spring them right on down wherever you want them to be. If there's any of these, you know, that maybe you don't need to have, you know, easily accessible, you can just put it right up over there, you know, call and text and other devices, you know, if it's on or off. So yeah, you can move them up or you can move them down. You can move these and reorder whichever way you want. You hit on done and then that is where they will be sitting. And so that's one way you can also take a screenshot. Now for this next one, I'm going to show you which one is my favorite. Uh, and it is going to be inside of the edge panel. It's sitting right here. It, this is just called smart select. So this is a smart select edge panel. And there is quite a few edge panels that you can go through. You know, if you don't have some of these ones, or maybe you don't have that option of uh, smart select, when you open up your edge panel, you're going to see a little option on the bottom for settings. And then right through here, this is where you can turn on that smart select option. And also while you're in the screen, turn on the tasks because the tasks is going to be another one I'll show you here in just a second. But this is the one that I use, I would say probably the majority of the time, 80% of the time, 95% of the time, whatever. I'm always going here because this is the simplest, easiest way uh, that I can do this. And this is where I'm able to take a screenshot, you know, of a certain area of whatever I want. And then this way I'd be able to hit on done and then I can share it immediately. Again, I can save it to my device, but I don't need to clutter up the gallery. I'll, I'll have to do is hit on this little share button. Maybe this is an image or an article or whatever the case. A lot of times when you see me sharing something on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it may be, this is going to be the way that I do it. Smart select from the edge panel. It makes it very easy. I don't have to take out the S Pen. I don't need several hands. I don't need several fingers. It's one finger. I select what I want. Once it's there, you hit on share and then you're basically done. And then you hit on back and that is really pretty much about it. Now, the other one is very similar, but this is where you're able to take a, a screenshot of the entire screen very quickly. You just tap this button, it's done, it's there. Uh, you can edit it a little bit if you want, or you can even share it. So maybe this is an option that you love better. You just wanna make sure that you turn on your edge panels, and then you wanna make sure you turn on tasks, you open this up. You don't care about editing the whole thing or selecting a certain area, you tap one button, that's very, very quick. So this is one way you can do it is with the edge panels. Just make sure that you have your edge panels turned on. And then after you have them turned on, you can just go right inside of your settings and then select smart select or select tasks. Now, this next one is going to be if you need to have a little bit more assistance with your phone, there is an area of the settings that is called accessibility. It's on the very bottom and inside of here with inside of accessibility, there's an option for assistant menu. Now, assistant menu is kind of just a little tab that's off on the right hand side. It gives you a lot of capabilities of the phone rather than having to go everywhere through the device or doing several swipes. You can do it with one button press. So inside of accessibility, you go inside of interaction and dexterity. Then you just want to turn on assistant menu and you hit on allow. It's probably going to turn off the one hand mode. Uh, and then inside of here, there is also more settings you can play with. You can see, you know, what you can do with all of it. Um, but really what you're able to do is when you open this up, there is the screenshot button right there. Now it is a little tab that's up here, um, but it does give you a lot of capabilities. So through this, um, oh, and you can also move it around. So if you needed to move it somewhere else, you can. You tap on this one here, uh, and then you have the back, home, recent, screen off, volume, screen control, power off menu. There's also menu settings, pinch to zoom, notifications panel, or if you want to use a cursor, you can. 
But yeah, this is a way that you can take a screenshot. Sitting right there, there was no changes I had to do with it other than basically just turning it on. Uh, if you don't need it, or maybe you just want to test it out, you go back inside of accessibility, interaction, and dexterity, and then you just turn off your assistant menu. Or maybe you noticed you had a little tab area turned on, you didn't know what it was, uh, now you do. Now this next one is one that is baked into the phone. It's way easier than the Google Assistant, and that is your Bixby. All you simply have to do once you set up your keyword uh, of hey Bixby, take a screenshot. Now, Bixby is really good at doing anything that you need your phone to do, or I should say it's really good at anything of making changes to the device. Like you can, you know, tell it to change the volume up, volume down, you know, turn on do not disturb, uh, you know, bring down the brightness, turn on automatic brightness, uh, turn on adaptive, you know, battery. I mean, there's so many things. Anything that you go through here manually change of all your different settings and such, uh, you can actually just tell Bixby to do for you. It's baked in there. It's, it does a really good job. Now, these next two are ones I wanted to save to the end because you do have to download another application. Uh, and this is going to be through GoodLock. Now, I didn't want to cover that Control Center app because it was one from the Play Store that you had to purchase. These ones are made by Samsung for Samsung. Samsung baked by Samsung, uh, even though it's in a region specific application called GoodLock, which GoodLock you can find inside of the Galaxy Store. So especially if you're inside of the United States, you'd be able to easily download this. If you're outside of it, outside the regions of where they are available, you might have to do VPN or try NiceLock or something. But inside of GoodLock, there's two of them we'll talk about, which is One Hand Operation Plus, and we'll also talk about Navstar. Now here's the thing, you might be using these already, but maybe you don't have them set up to take a screenshot super easy and quick. Now with Navstar, all you pretty much have to do is once you get this thing turned on, I'm going to switch over into buttons. I'm going to turn on this button option here. It's not going to allow me yet because I have to change my settings of my phone. It's going to take me there, you know, for me. I'm just going to hit on buttons. And then once I select buttons, I'm going to head right back over back inside of here. And I want to turn this back on. And here's my option. This is the one that I created. Now you can create your own new, you know, configuration with any of these icons. Basically, the one that I found is the normal static one that everybody's used to. The recent home back is sitting right here. All I did was when I went to new configuration, uh, I basically have this. And then I went to button layout. And then I hit add button. And then I did screen capture. And screen capture goes right there. And you can actually move it. Uh, so after you have it all set up the way you want it to look, it's going to look just like this. And then anytime you want to take a screenshot, it's right there. So, I mean, this is the quickest most convenient way to take a screenshot, but this is just not made for me. Maybe somebody who's into the navigation, but, or uh, yeah, with the, with the buttons on the bottom physically right there, little icons, you can use this one. It's very easy. You also have this little icon right here. If you double tap it, what's going to happen is with it, with it being that open middle button there, it's going to disappear when you open up other applications. So this way, this stuff is not going to overlay on the screen of the application. Uh, double tap it, it locks it. So if you always want it to be shown invisibly there, you can actually lock it in by that little double tap of that little button. But again, it's right there, super easy. I mean, it's even faster than the one that I have up over here um, because I have to do a couple swipes. This one's just one little tap. But again, I am not much of a button navigation dude, so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna turn this off. Uh, I turned off the, navi the nav Navstar one, and now that I've done that, I'm gonna head right back inside of the settings. Uh, and then through here, I'm gonna go down into display. With inside of display, I'm gonna head down over into navigation bar, and I am a gesture swipe type of guy. Now we're gonna head over inside again, good luck one more time. And this time we're gonna talk about the One Hand Operation Plus. One Hand Operation Plus allows you to do a lot of things with one hand, which again, makes it very easy. So through here, you can make a bunch of different changes uh, on the very bottom. Over here, my left handle is set up for screenshot. My right handle is set up for back key and widgets pop-up. Now, if I wanted to use it in another way, this would be the application I would do it as because I'm always used to the right hand side. I mean, this is always back. So I can swipe back. It's gonna get me back. I have to do it twice in the screen here. But once I go here, I can swipe all the way back, everything I want to. And then I also have it set up to where if I go diagonal down, it's gonna open up a couple widgets that I can take a look at and clear some RAM and such and take a look at my storage and my steps and all that good stuff. And then on the right side, uh, or I should say the left side, I have it set up for the screenshot. So on my left handle, I don't have anything going on for any of the diagonals, for diagonal up or down. I have it just literally straight across going from the left, it's gonna take a screenshot for me. You know, you just simply tap on this and you select what you want it to do. There's screen off and previous app, track, toggle mute, recents. You have all those good things, but there's screenshot right there. You have that as the option. And then on the right-hand side, what I have set up is gonna be 
um, pretty much the back key and then the widgets pop up as you can see. So yeah, you can use the one hand operation plus uh, if this is something you'd like to use. My, my area of activation is here. So if I do anything up here, it's not gonna do it. Again, it's gonna happen over here. I can also go down and I can hold it. That's gonna pop up my widgets. This right here, uh, swiping from the left-hand side, you can see it's sitting right there. Uh, once I do that, it's gonna take a screenshot. But that's all the ways you can take a screenshot on your Samsung phone. If there's anything that I missed, let me know. Again, I didn't wanna cover the Google Assistant because it's way too long, it doesn't do a good job. And Control Pan or Control Center is a paid app. I wanna show everything that's free, baked by Samsung or default on the phone. So let me know which one is your favorite. Uh, other than that, hit on that little like button if you appreciated and enjoyed this video. Also, you can hit on subscribe button on the very bottom left-hand side. Or if you like this video, you can also appreciate this video. And I'll see you guys later.